Hello, and welcome to Pardon My Frenchie. This is me, 143. So today we're going to talk about my this is me, or one of my this is me. So I'm going to start out by saying his name was Sammy. So just like any roller coaster, he was one of my first puppies. I rescued him from a bad situation. And just like any time you get a puppy, it's always exciting. Get in line. Anticipation. You never know what's going to happen with the puppy. Everything's always new. Everything's always fresh. They have the fun times. You have the accidents. You have everything that goes along with a puppy. You never think about the future. You're only thinking about now. And to be honest, one thing I was thinking about the other day is that no matter how old our pets get, you never really see them as old. As they get older, even though they are older, I don't know, it's kind of weird. You kind of just always see them as young, um, or I do. Anyways, I, I was at the vet the other day and the lady was walking out with her senior dog and um the dog was you know visibly old to me but you know i looking looking at my dogs and so forth i don't i don't look at them as old i mean i when i look at them i see them as when they were little and um i think that that's what makes it hard sometimes when when they do get old because they don't have very long lifespans so Anyways, um, going through Sammy's life, um, he was one of he was one of my four. I had Sammy, Daisy, uh, Cookie, and Sweepy, and um, he was very uh, he was a very loving dog, and very sweet, and um, he was just very you know just a very very sweet sweet dog. So he was probably one of my favorites. And so as he grew older. Um, he had one episode in the house where um, all of a sudden he fainted in the house. And um, it was kind of ironic because I noticed all of the other dogs around him um, laid down around. I had never seen anything like it. They kind of laid down around him and um, just kind of, I just, it was just kind of a quiet, peaceful moment. And then he came out of it and he came up and, and so I always coined the phrase, my, my boy was surrounded by angels. And, um, you know, he got up, everything was fine from there. Never really thought anything of it. So then probably about two years later, um, he had an episode in the yard where he fell over and was having a bit of a, a seizure moment. And I would say that that kind of started my roller coaster ride. Um, you know, throughout his life, everything had been smooth. Everything was fine. You know, we, we had our ups and downs, but nothing, nothing bad. Um, I remember taking him to the emergency vet that day and he looked fine to me. And when the vet came in, he said that we had two options. We could have, <clears throat> we could put him on heart medicine or we could, uh, uh, put him down and looking at his face and him not knowing what was going on. Um, I could not fathom putting him down. So, um, we went ahead and we went to a cardiologist and, um, proceeded on that track. He ended up having what's called or cardiomyopathy and uh, we went back and forth uh, to the vet for uh, probably about two months he was on very expensive medicine and um, then it was a day in may it was may 21st so actually it's an anniversary coming up here soon uh, i had forgotten that um, a friend was coming in town and one of his regulations was that he could not get um, excited. And so 
I had made the mistake of letting a friend come over. And um, when I was at the house, you know, we were all there. All of a sudden, I heard a loud cry and something in myself I knew. I knew that um, it was him and something told me in my my heart and my head that he was gone. I yelled at my husband. My husband went and checked on the dog and um, and he was gone. I think that is the first time that my heart really shattered when you could actually feel my heart shatter. As I went downstairs where he where he was laying, um, I couldn't wrap my head around anything. I couldn't figure anything out. That was the first time I'd ever, you know, lost a, a pet or a family member. And so I didn't know what to do. I was scared. I was confused. Um, I went and I called our local funeral home who they came right away. They picked him up. And I still remember sitting on the front porch and those doors shutting. Um, and then that was the last time I saw my, my dog. Um, a few days later, they called um, and I was able to come and, and pick up his, his ashes. For months after I had lost him, I could not wrap my head around why I was not able to stop spontaneously con crying. I would break out in uncontrollable tears um, where everybody else in the family had kind of uh, moved on with their, their grief. I, I could not, I could not. I kept hearing the sounds. I kept hearing... Um, everything that was going on, I, I could not move past uh, the grief. And everything that society tells you is that that's not right. That you shouldn't mourn a dog or a pet. Um, and so I thought I was crazy. I thought that there was something wrong with me. And... So I started doing some research and I found um, that pet loss and grief is a very, very real thing. And I found a pet loss group. There was literally just one and I attended one of their meetings. And then um, I decided to dive in and I got certified as a pet loss and grief counselor. Where then I started my own meetings. And went and um, welcomed people in for free. I never charged anybody anything to come and um, have a safe place to come and talk to talk about their their lost pets. I put everything, all of my grief, into those meetings to help me heal. But it was most important for me to let people know that they weren't alone. It was most important for me to let people know that what they were feeling was valid, that they weren't crazy, that when people came to the meetings, that they didn't have to open their wallets, that they didn't need to make excuses for why they would cry. And people came from all different walks of life. I had anywhere from kids to um, veterans to, um, you know, just people from all, all over. And they were in the same situations that, that I was in. I eventually branched out into where I would help people if they needed to um, put their animals down. I would offer to go with them so that they wouldn't be alone. Uh, I did this all in honor of my dog that I lost. And in that process, it helped me heal. So it's all about taking a bad situation and turning it into a good one. 
even though I was the one that was feeling lonely in my grief process, I found that through my groups that I wasn't the only one. And that gave me comfort. And the kind of the neat thing in the group, in my, my pet loss group, was once people started healing, they, st they kept coming back to help other people, which was just a beautiful thing. So something bad turned into something good where I could turn and help others and then others could help other people heal. So that is my, this is me this week. This is me, a pet loss grief counselor. Somebody that can help other people when they're in a bad situation. So if that sounds like somebody like you, or if you've ever been in a situation where you feel alone, or you feel like you've been in a grief situation for a long period of time over a loss of a pet, know that you are perfectly normal. There's no limit on grief. You take your time and you deal with it the way that you are. And if you need to reach out for help, we are always here for you. Just send an email, write us a letter. We'll be more than happy to help you with your journey. Until next time, you don't have a friend, you have one now. Take care. Have a good night.